Hey you guys, it's Nathan. We are going to be looking at how to blend two images together and you could do multiple images, things like that. But I received an email and also a comment from someone saying, hey, this is how I do blending in GIMP, the free photo editing software. I was wondering how would you do this in Photoscape X? And he showed the blend tool and ways to add these two images together. And I wanted to try to recreate some of that in Photoscape X. So for today's project, we're going to have Photoscape X opened. We're going to hit new. We're going to just set a preset to uh, 1280 by 720, which is the YouTube thumbnail size. Um, this is kind of my thought when I think of the reason why I might blend an image is if I'm making a video or something, we would put it together and maybe we'd be blending more than just cutting and adding um, if we were doing a project like that. So uh, let's go to insert. So in the top right here, we have the insert button that pulls up our drawer where we have our images and we can navigate around and find our images. So we're going to start with this base image and this base image is just a a screenshot that I took after I reached a uh, certain rank level in a strategy game that I play and I hit diamond uh, 4 which means that I am in the top 1.8% of all the world's players uh, for this specific game and I thought okay that's pretty cool I want to save that maybe I could make a little video talking about the strategies that I use so I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do that. You know, sometimes you have ideas, but maybe you don't end up executing on those. Um, nonetheless, we can kind of increase the size of this. And what's neat is that the background is just black. So what I could do is I could say, oh, well, let me just paint the background black here. I can go to over to tools, go to draw. I could just pick something here and I could just select that back black background. Then I could paint kind of the background here black. So now we have the entire image and uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to do. If I want to have it tilted in or tilted out, you know, there's a lot of things in here, but blending these two images, that'll be the interesting part. Um, doesn't need to be super crazy huge. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, yeah, but doing it in would be interesting too. Maybe out at like, a, we'll just say out at a 5% angle, and then we'll draw this in. Okay, so we'll do that in for the background. If I would have thought ahead of time, I would have said, oh, I could have just made the background black to begin with. So nonetheless, we have that. We have an area here for my face. Now, instead of just uh, inserting a transparent image of like my face, um, let me let me show you what that would look like. So using the cutout tab and I've made many videos on how to remove the background of an image. Um, you could definitely hop over here to like photo bank and I have different cutouts of myself, but like you could put yourself like right there and there you have it. You could do that. But sometimes it doesn't look as natural. It doesn't look as realistic. It looks like, oh, he has this and he crop this in, stuff like that. And maybe it's something where you want to have that background as well and have like a nice blur in between. So we're going to try that today. Um, all right, so we're going to add in. Yeah, there's different images I could use. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to images. Maybe we'll do a few different ones. I had one kind of thought to do that I could use this, and I would just want uh, my face in there. But that's the question on how do you remove uh, this stuff here? Or how do you blend? Or how do you do different things? Well, let's see. We could. There's an ellipse. There's a circle. Um, so there's different stuff there. There's some shadows, there's some transform features that you could do. But how would you get it to blend? Um, in uh, GIMP, it's actually really nice where you're able to uh, put those different blurs in on your layers, where in this case, you are limited at different places. Because uh, that's not going to help you, because that isn't going to, that's just going to fill your image. There's some different kind of 
options there that you could try to use. Um, but what could you do here? You have shapes, so like you could go with roundness, ellipse, circle. Hmm, looks kind of tough. So at these points, uh, when you're editing, you're like, okay, what in the world's going on? How do you make this work? But uh, I think we might have a solution here. Uh, the only problem is it's going to take a bit more time and a bit more energy than what it would probably take in Photoshop or um, in something like GIMP that allows you to have full editing control over your images. So um, let's see what we could do here. What we might have to do is we might have to start with a different kind of thought process in our beginning. So we might have to start with uh, the image. Uh, we could use this one or we could use the other one. Um, yeah, we could do it either way. So what we could do is go over here to crop, do 16 by nine, put my face on this side. Uh, I might just crop it like that. So we got that and then we want to put that diamond um, on the side here. And we want like this side here to be blurred out. How would we do that? Well, one thing we could do, um, cause can we draw transparency here? Subtract. Oh, no, 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 oh, that's only gonna subtract off that, okay. Hmm, there are some different adjustments. Uh, film effect, reduce noise, uh, dehaze, colorize, granite map, granite fill. Well, yeah, but you can't pick transparency as one of your colors here for that uh, granite fill. Okay. Overlay, no. Okay, so that's no good. Um, opacity. Okay, that's just straight opacity. Ooh, ooh, this might be our, our tool here. Uh, you have opacity, which is kind of the most like generic, like why would you want an opacity thing? But it could actually be our saving grace here. So we could hit this. Now my one question is, if I do opacity, okay, we're just gonna do that. That's, you know, 18% opacity. That's 100% opacity. Oh, okay, so I was trying to see if I could layer it or something. Ooh, ooh, uh, mask mode. Yes, okay, okay, so we can we can do that. Okay, so um, this is gonna be pretty interesting. So we have this, we can go into mask, and we can turn it. So what we're looking at here is that, um, yeah, so it's preserving this side of the image and then it's starting to blur out the other. Okay, I need that to be a lot stronger. We can make it a lot stronger, that's good. We need to turn that opacity up to, is it? No, no, to zero. So it's actually going to cut that image out. Okay, so we got that. Get that turn, get that rotation. Okay. So we've got that. Nice, okay, so we have that there. The only problem is that this is now the base image and you can't put anything behind the base image from my understanding. Um, so yes, that looks really good. It's really neat that you're able to cut that out and able to slide that opacity to what you want it to be. Um, you can, of course, invert the mask as well. Okay, but we can we can hit apply there. So then you have me on one side and then you have it cut out on the other. So at that point you would have to save out. Um, down here at the bottom, this was something that I think one of my other YouTube uh, comments was about. It was that the matte color, you know, what do you want that matte color to be like if you are doing a, a output, like can we, uh, can we pick transparency as our output? Like the whole thing is that JPEG does not allow a transparent uh, color. So technically, no, you can't. Um, one thing is, 
monitor resolution, preserve file data. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, we're just kind of messing around at this point. Okay, we're gonna go to save as, we're gonna to go to PNG, we're gonna save this out to the desktop. All right, so we have that saved, where we used that opacity, and that worked out pretty nicely. Okay, next, we're going back to, oopsie. Yeah, we're going back to desktop here. Okay. Now what we can do is we can hit new, open our, our thing, I can um, go to insert, I can insert that image in. So now we have that image in, scale to 100. Oh, <laughs> I guess I didn't save it as a smaller image, which is good, because then I have plenty of detail and some flexibility still in the image. So now I can slide it around, and make it pretty much what I want. Nice, so we have that in there. Um, and then we go to images again. We click that, uh, you know, you've been promoted, you know, type of a thing. We can make it bigger. I don't want the tap to continue necessarily. I just want the, you've been promoted. And we could do it straight, we could. Yeah, it just kind of depends on what we want to do there. Diamond four. Yeah, we could just do that where it's just huge. I can definitely see that being pretty cool. Yeah, because that diamond down there doesn't need to be there. Okay, it's diamond four. I wanted to have a little bit of freedom to move around a little bit. Okay. Okay, nice, okay. So we're gonna see how that looks. I'm gonna send it back. Okay, so the wording kinda gets cut off uh, a little bit. Okay. So we might have to. Hmm. Yeah, right now we're not like, <laughs> we're not like battling between, oh, how does this look versus how does this look? It's just kind of the images we're trying to blend. It's like, oh, the black and that white there, you know, how good does that look uh, type of a thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, we don't want that moved over much. Um, it just depends on if I look at that and I say, wow, that, uh, transparency that I put in there, um, do I like that? Is it the style that I want it to be? Should it have been harsher or things like that? But definitely does give you, uh, that change that you're looking for there. So let's, uh, let's save it out and see, well, we don't necessarily have to save it out. We can go into layers and we could just hit merge. Um, you know, we cut that. That's what it would look like, which for the first time of me doing it and without having practiced it before, I enjoy doing videos where I am kind of in the learning process as well. So you guys get to see it. Um, that's how you could make an image blended. You would have to uh, go back to the original. You would have to go with that opacity and you have to make that uh, gradient slide then you're able to put it on as well gradient opacity here eh. so there might be a few different options or ways to make it happen um, this is looking very similar to what we had before um, type of a thing Yeah, but it just depends on how much you feather it, how much you do different things with uh, the image. So I think that this has definitely been a success here. I think it's been, it's really cool to see how you could like maybe slide stuff around or how you could do different things. Um, 
but I think it's neat. It's a way that you can continue to unlock what you're doing. At some points, you're like, whoa, wait, why didn't I just, you know, cut out the image and then put this over here? Yeah, it kind of just depends on what you're trying to accomplish in your edit. Um, uh, nonetheless, you guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you have any other um, kind of challenges for whether it's Photoscape X or another software where you say, hey, can this software also do this? Where in this case, I'm glad that I was able to make something that is fairly convincing where you don't have to go out and learn GIMP fully to take advantage of a quick tool or a quick style of edit. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.